do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello students today we are studying chapter diversity in organisms in that we are studying topic the meaning of systematics and taxonomy both these terms systematic and taxonomy are closely related about Whitaker's five kingdom classification we all know that before classifying organisms we have to identify whether they are living non living and then we have to name them today we'll be studying how taxonomy and systematics is related to each other and to five kingdom classification systematics when i talk about systematics and taxonomy they both are correlated with each other if you identify an organism and this organism is living we need to understand that what and how this organism was diverse or was present systematics is nothing but it is studying phylogenetic relationship between different organisms when i say phylogenetic relationship example there is a relationship between gorillas and human being and between e coli e coli is an organism but the common link between the three of them is the chromosomal structure or you can say the genetic material of e coli and human beings are almost similar we both are eukaryotes so systematics is nothing but the study of diversification of living forms both past as well as present living organisms this relationship among them through time when it is study it is called as systematics basically systematics help evolutionary studies to happen it helps down to lay a ground for phylogenetic studies the relationship between organism and common example of systematic study would be the relationship between tiger leopard lion and cat they all belong to the same species or family in systematics after we have did systematics for a particular phyla or particular species then the time comes for naming we all know about binomial nomenclature that was done by carlinius now taxonomy is nothing but naming but during taxonomy what we do is we name the organism we describe the organism and then we classify the organism basically you do nomenclature and then you classify the organism depending upon their mode of nutrition their hereditary characteristics whether they are autotrophs or chemoautotrophs whether they are multicellular or unicellular their phylogenetic traits their evolutionary traits and so on so whenever whitaker studied an organism the first step that he took was to do systematics that is to identify the relationship between various examples of organism for example if we talk about bacteria they all have a phylogenetic relationship they all are prokaryotes they all ha are have flagella they can reproduce sexually as well as asexually and when you so once whitaker did the systematic studies of bacteria the next step what he did was the naming some bacteria are gram positive and some was gram negative this was taxonomy basically naming and once naming was done what it did was classification classifying them into different groups systematics systematics is nothing but 
study of diversification of living organism for example microbes humans plants they all are living but they have different categories so, microbe is a prokaryote whereas we humans and plants are eukaryotes so systematic is basically the study of that both past and present organisms and the relationship are studied in systematics for example archaebacteria or you can say U bacteria, how it was related to other forms of bacteria like E. coli, which is present today. Systematic also deals with the study of how in evolution the organisms changed. For example, how we as humans lost our tail or our spine became erect. That is a systematic study. During systematic study, what happens is we get to know the ancestral relationship between organisms. Like we and gorilla, we are ancestrally related. Even systematics helps to find evolutionary connect between organism. How the archaebacteria evolved and now we have E. coli 0145. The journey of microorganisms helps to study systematics. Taxonomy. Taxonomy is nothing but the process of naming. It means the process of giving binomial nomenclature or giving species name and genera name to an organism. Carl Linnaeus when gave binomial nomenclature, taxonomy is one part of that. Apart from naming, taxonomy believes in describing organism. Students, in this part of the chapter, we have studied about systematics and taxonomy and how they are interrelated with each other. If systematics is not done, taxonomy cannot be done. In order to lay a ground for studying an organism, the first step is identification, that is living and non-living. Second step is systematics, studying the changes or evolutionary changes of that organism. And the third step is naming and classification, which combines taxonomy. I hope you all are clear with this concept. Thank you.